Our day revolves around the sun, but how much do we know about the sun? A historic mission to study the sun has been launched. The European Space Agency has collaborated with NASA. It's the most ambitious project of its kind. The orbiter that has been launched will get extremely close to the sun. In its quest for some answers, our next report tells you more. Four, three, two, one, zero. And liftoff of our solar orbit. At exactly 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States, the Atlas V rocket carrying the solar orbiter blasted off from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. The launch was successful. Over the next two days, the solar orbiter will deploy its instrument boom and other antennas with which it will communicate with Earth. Hopefully you'll be able to understand more um, the sun and how it impacts uh, the Earth, our, our weather here. Also, it's, it's the first time we'll be going and observing the poles. So we use Venus, the, the planet Venus and the gravity assists to incline the orbit of the spacecraft around the sun. And we'll go up to 30 degrees with, with the years. The solar orbiter is a sun-observing satellite. Built at a cost of 1.5 billion euros, it will offer unprecedented insights on the inner workings of the sun. It will also provide humanity with the first ever images of the sun's poles. It will be a 10 year long voyage in which scientists hope to study the sun's atmosphere, its winds and magnetic fields. No bigger than the size of a mini van. The solar orbiter is constructed to withstand temperatures as high as 500 degrees Celsius. Solar wind storms can have a crippling effect on Earth. A particularly bad solar radiation flare can disrupt radar systems, radio networks and can even render satellites useless. The largest solar storm on record hit North America in September 1859 knocking out much of the continent's telegraph network. It also created a blaze of auroras that were visible in the Caribbean. But such phenomena are rare. And to study these phenomena caused by solar winds, the orbiter will have to get really close to the sun. A gravity assist is uh flying by very close to a planet in order to use the gravitational pull of this planet to change the orbit. This we do repeatedly with Venus uh, seven times and with the Earth one time. By doing so, we can, um, we can finally uh, achieve an orbit that is uh, elliptic, gets close to the sun, and that uh, goes out of the, of the ecliptic. The ecliptic is the, the plane in which all the uh, planets are orbiting the sun. And uh, by going out of the ecliptic, we, we get to high latitudes and we can get uh, very clear observations of the sun poles. After its fly past of Mercury and Venus, the solar orbiter will reach a mind-boggling top speed of 245,000 kilometers per hour. The liftoff from Cape Canaveral is just the beginning of a journey that will help us understand the sun better. Bureau Report, we on World is One.